Triangular wheels, eh? Well, I'm prepared to give them a go. Let's see how they perform. I've made a little cut with triangular wheels just there. And I'll put a little man on there so we can see what sort of ride he gets, and I'll push him along. Oh dear, rough as anything, and he falls off. In fact, the whole cart looks decidedly rickety, which it is. So triangular wheels of that kind aren't any good used in that way. But it's not such a silly idea. They really do work if you use them the right way. And I'll show you what that is. First of all, we have to make them in a particular way. And that's based on an equilateral triangle. If you remember that, all sides and all angles are equal. And if you've forgotten how to make one, here's a reminder. Make a dot on a piece of paper. Here's a pair of compasses with a point on the dot and swing an arc like that. Another point anywhere on that arc, put the compass point on that point and cut the arc again. And between those three places, if you draw the lines in with a ruler, you get an equilateral triangle. And that's just what you need as the basis of that wheel. And to save time, there it is, and that's a beautiful one. Now what we have to do is to adjust our compasses so that when you put the point there, the pin is on that point of the triangle and that one as well. And turning it round, we do that all the way around the triangle. And we get that peculiar shape, which is really called a curve of constant width. And it's called that, and it behaves in some ways like a wheel in this particular fashion. First of all, take a square and look at an ordinary wheel revolving inside that. You can see as the wheel turns, first of all, the centre of the wheel stays in the same place, but the wheel, if I can keep it steady, revolves so that all sides of it are touching all four sides of the square. And it does that, and it performs the functions of a wheel very well indeed. Well, our curve of constant width does something similar, but it's uh, quite an interesting difference as well. First of all, it revolves in that square very prettily. The centre doesn't stay in the same place, but you'll notice that at any one time, it's touching all four sides of the square. Move it onto there, and it's true. Move it onto there, and it's true. As it revolves, it fills in that square like that. So it's no good as a wheel if we want to ride on the axle. It is good as a wheel if we want to use it as a roller. Now, as a roller, that would work. But it's better if we can iron out those sharp bumps. And this is how we do it. Produce all the lines of the triangle so that they stick out beyond it, like that. Then put the compasses on in just the same way, but pull them out past the points of the triangle, probably to about there, and you go around in this fashion. One arc there, one arc here, and one arc here. It's pretty well the same sort of thing, but instead of having sharp points, we make them rounded in this way. Put the points of the compass there, close the whole thing up a bit, and fill in the missing bits with a curve. One, two, and three. That was a bit hurried. And you can see it's a little rough, but if you take your time, you get a very beautiful shape like that. And there it is, the curve of constant width. I've cut it out of a piece of light card, stiff enough not to bend with the weight of the cut. And I've been able to draw around that and make many copies, and here they are, lined up along the table. So let's junk that little cart. It didn't work like that. Let's try it as a roller. With a much bigger board, putting it on there, and putting our little man on the top. And if I'm right, although they'll appear to go up and down those wheels, the cart on top will get a very smooth ride and the man won't be shaken off. Here we go, a ride on triangular wheels.